So here we are in the, the basement of um, what is below Bowen Street. Um, we've got a tower crane that, that's now been erected and where um, the, the project is really starting to ramp up. At any stage in a project, putting a tower crane up, it, it, it um, really signifies that the project is kicking into the, the next gear. Um, certainly optimising a location for the crane that doesn't require lifting um, loads over the public or buildings that, that have people in them, that, that certainly is best practice. From there, other things you need to consider are what's the heaviest load you're going to need to lift. Um, that then kind of drives, okay, what, what type of crane do you need? What's its reaching capacity? Um, where are you going to position it? And what are you going to position it off? They're all live buildings. Um, the, the buildings are all occupied. Um, and we have one street um, that we can lift off through here, which is, uh, which is Bowen Street. So Bowen Street became the, um, the logical location for us to set up our deliveries, um, where, where vehicles enter and exit from. Um, and that then dictated uh, to a large degree where we actually set the crane up so that it could pick up off Bowen Street and service the, um, the construction site. When the mast is right up in its most vertical position, it's probably around about 120 metres above the ground. Um, it's got a reach or a, um, a radius that's um, 60, um, 60 metres. The most it can lift at any point in time is 18 tonne, and that's when the, the jib or the boom is in the most vertical upright position. When it's um, reaching at a greater distance, it will pick up around about three tonne. going to be lifting um, all building materials, plant and equipment. Um, it could be lifting things like uh, scissor lifts, it could be lifting um, packs of plasterboard, scaffold, um, block work, uh, structural steel. Um, we're prefabricating a lot of our facade elements off-site so they'll come to site pre-made. It'll then lift those into position. It's an electric crane and they are a lot quieter than uh, the old diesel cranes. Um, you will still hear it when its engine gets going to, or motor gets going to, um, you know, winch the rope up and lift a load, but it is, um, it, it is actually quite quiet. You, you'd be surprised. To set a tower crane up, you have to have a mobile crane or another crane to erect the crane. So we had a, um, a large 350 tonne mobile crane come to site. That takes the best part of half a day to rig up, set up um, and get positioned. Once that, was, once that was in place, we then started having deliveries of semi-trailer loads of um, uh, the, the, the crane's tower sections, which are the mast which it sits upon. Once all the tower sections are installed, the, um, the crane is uh, delivered to site in sections. Um, I suppose the first section to go up is what's called the machine deck. So that gets put up into place. From there, the, um, the cabin will be installed and the crane's A-frame. Um, the next activity from there would generally be to put the, uh, the crane's counterweights on. So um, they're large blocks of concrete that sit at the back or the rear of the, the machine deck. That will generally be about as far as you get on day one and certainly was the, the case with us. Um, from there, you move into day two. The big activity for day two is getting the jib or the boom um, installed. Um, we laid that down along Bowen Street. It's um, around about 60 metres long. The jib will get pre-assembled on the road. It'll then get lifted up in one piece via the mobile crane and connected to the, uh, the tower crane up above. There'll be a crew of, um, of, of, of riggers who will be working on the crane and um, all secured with harnesses and so forth. They'll attach the uh, jib to the crane and from there rig it all up. From there the, um, the next activity is to put the, um, the spool or the, or the rope onto the, the crane and that's a, that's a fairly easy activity that um, just basically involves winding the rope onto the, onto the drum um, that, that the hook then connects to. Um, generally we're able to install or, or do large crane lifts um, when wind conditions are around about 
nine uh, metres per second. Um, we were experiencing around about 16, 17 metres per second uh, wind conditions and that becomes unsafe for the crane crew to work in and uh, becomes very difficult to try and manage large lifts that the crane's lifting up because the wind will just, you know, um, spin them around and it becomes uncontrollable. From when you first start hooking up the, the chains onto the jib and working out where the centre of gravity is for the jib so that it, it gets lifted in a nice flat level position, you connect tag lines to it for the, uh, for the banksman or the dogman to um, hold onto and control which direction the wind may try and uh, blow the jib in. Um, it's around, through to when it's connected, it's around about a 45 minute activity. The, the first thing that happens is you've got to put the crane base down, the foundations for it. So that's what, what this is here, this is the, the crane, um, crane base. It sits on top of uh, four piles that go down into the ground around about 12 metres, around about 12 metres, around about 12 metres, around about... The piling rig we had to get in here, if you, you look around at the moment, we've actually cut um, large sections of the existing structure out. So uh, this once upon a time was a, a concrete slab that went through here, as was the, the one above. So um, we had to cut those out to get the crane in. Uh, and put some temporary propping in to support the edges of those, those slabs that have been cut out. So we actually had to bring a, a mini piling rig, a small sized rig, in through the existing basement, walk it in here and get it to do the, um, the piling. To do. There are always um, conditions which you encounter in construction that force you to rethink the way that you were going to do the work, um, replan and, and adjust accordingly. We worked with our structural engineer, we worked with the um, engineer for the, 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 the crane who works out the, um, the crane loadings. Uh, we also liaised very closely with the piling contractor and, um, and of course then there are the stakeholders outside of the, the immediate work which include the university, um, local authorities, all of whom need to be notified and kept up to date with what's happening with the timing for when the crane goes up. So where we're at at the moment is um, round about two levels below uh, Bowen Street, uh, where we have our all of our crane deliveries, our large vehicles um, arriving for the, the crane to then unload them. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we've got some pretty significant um, loads which will be coming to site. The, the largest um, load sits at around about 18 tonne. When you understand all of that, you, you need to then look at, well, where are these deliveries coming to? And um, this particular delivery that, that we're talking about is going to be directly above us. The structure as it stands at the moment isn't able to support an 18 tonne load plus the, the load of the, the vehicle which it arrives on. So we're going to need to do some propping down here of the existing structure and there are some beams around us where we're going to have to have some, um, some heavy duty propping going before we bring those larger deliveries to site. Um, so it's a large steel member, it will have a, a, a foot plate or a bearing plate at the top, a bearing plate at the bottom, um, and then in between will be a, um, a steel section and you wind the feet up at the top and you wind the foot down at the bottom until it wedges itself, or positions itself um, against the structure and against the ground. You then level it up to make sure that the, the load is being transferred um, as the, the props are designed to be and wind it until it's securely in place. So with construction, it, it is very dynamic. You always um, plan for how you anticipate uh, the works are going to be carried out and there, there's a lot of detail and thought that goes into that. Um, but construction is dynamic and things um, do happen, weather conditions or unexpected finds, different ground conditions, whatever it may be. Um, it is important that, that when you do encounter those situations that you review how you were going to um, carry the work out, how you thought it was going to unfold and adjust your methodology or your, um, your, your work method accordingly.